and here it goes. It's downloading. And here we go. Uh, the system has finished downloading it, and it is now using the system's uh, package manager to update everything. Uh, we could see our progress by scrolling down a little bit, and it's done. Now, as you can see, uh, it's telling us that there are actually updates for this version of Webmin. Sometimes you'll see this, sometimes you won't. We're going to click here and download this as well. And there we go. Now we're all set up. We're going to go back to the Webmin configuration. Uh, watch the version number here. Oh, it hasn't changed. Let's reload. Well, it hasn't changed here, but we can see on the Webmin version here that we are up to date. There we go, 138. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go address that uh, SSL issue before we go any further. So we're going to go down to SSL encryption and click on that. We're going to want to make sure that uh, enable SSL is uh, selected. Uh, the private key file and certificate file can be left as is. We want to request redirect non-SSL requests to SSL mode. That should always be yes. Uh, the protocol version can be uh, left as is, and we're going to click on save to save these changes. Now we're going to go back to SSL encryption, uh, and we are going to go to create certificate. Now this is going to let us create a new certificate um, which will be completely randomized. It's akin to changing the, uh, the, the encryption method uh, used. The server name and the URL could be left to any host name uh, unless you're getting these signed. Uh, it, does, it doesn't really uh, make much of a difference. And we're going to click uh, Create Now. Make sure that we say Use New Key immediately and Create Now. Uh, and that created the, the new key information. And now when we click on Web and Configuration, we are again going to have a certificate error. Uh, why? Because we just made a new certificate, and the new certificate is now also still untrusted. So we're going to click here for more options. And again, click on Continue to this website, not recommended. Okay? So we were on the Webmin Configuration page. So now we are using the uh, the new SSL certificate, so everything we can be rest assured that uh, that things are working well. Now we're going to switch the default URL to make it harder uh, to make it harder for others to uh, quote unquote guess that we're using Webmin uh, and attack our server. Since Webmin is on port 10,000, a lot of well, wannabe hackers, uh, you know, just look for servers listening on port 10,000 to attack them. So what we're going to do is go in from webmin configuration to ports and addresses. And here, uh, we can uh, change the number uh, to any other number but that's more than 1,024 uh, and less than 19,999. Uh, I'm going to use 10,002. I suggest that you don't use 10,002 uh, just because if everyone starts using 10,002 just because I suggested it, then we really haven't uh, accomplished anything by randomizing the port we're listening on. There is no reason to listen for UDP broadcasts. That's just opening you up for problems unless you're uh, running a cluster of centrally configured servers. Um, and it's not needed unless you're running a, such a cluster anyways. So if you are using a cluster, I assume you know what you're doing and you can leave it on. Otherwise, put it off um, and click on Save. Now remember that since we just changed ports, uh, we're going to have to go and re-log into the website. Uh, so let's do that quickly. Now, the next thing we want to do uh, is change our system host name. Uh, and this is the name that it's going to use to identify itself by default, although for individual applications that care about a specific name, you'll still be able to tune that later. So we're going to go to the main menu. We're going to go to networking. And then we're going to click on network configuration. And here we're going to click on host name and DNS client. 
And here we have our host name. So we're going to change it to Ubuntu Tutorial. Uh, and then we're going to click Save. Now, do not touch anything else here unless you know exactly what you're doing. Because uh, if you mess around with the network stuff, you could disconnect yourself. Uh, and if you disconnect yourself, I <laughs> please don't plan on holding me responsible for your server no longer working. So don't touch anything else. Um, last but not least, we want to make sure that our... Um, that our server is running the most up-to-date set of packages. Uh, so now we're going to go to our and visit our package manager. So to do that, we're going to go close networking. And we're going to go to system, software packages. Now, if we scroll to the bottom of the page, we'll have here an option to upgrade uh, all packages. Um, now, depending on uh, exactly which distribution you have, uh, you might see different options here, um, but basically you want to do a uh, distribution upgrade. And by the way, we're doing the distribution upgrade now before we start installing uh, you know, our own application so, uh, on it. Basically, this is the only time you're ever going to want to do a distribution upgrade. From now on, you're going to use normal upgrade when you want. Uh, since we really want to upgrade, we're going to say only show which packages would be upgraded. Uh, no, and then finally we're going to click on Upgrade Now. Uh, and here goes our package manager. It's going to download and install all the, the uh, additional programs that we asked for. Um, we're fetching 43 megabytes of uh, packages, so I'll uh, time out here and come back when it's done. So hold on. And here we go. Uh, everything's been downloaded. And our package manager is happily installing packages. And whoa, here we go. And that's it. The server's been completely updated. Um, since most likely we updated the operating system itself, it would be a good idea to reboot the system. So we're going to go to Boot and Shut Down. Uh, if you have a VNC or any other remote viewer, this would be a good time to uh, bring that up to make sure that there are no problems with upgrading the kernel. There shouldn't be. Uh, and if there are, chances are your uh, hosting provider will be um, not will be pretty much helpful about uh, about troubleshooting things that you know just happen Im immediately after a standard kernel upgrade. Uh, so we are going to click on reboot system, and yes, ooh, and that's it. So uh, our servers are going to reboot now, and when it comes back up, we're going to be completely up to date uh, with the latest operating system, the latest software packages, and the latest uh, webmin. Um, control panel. Um, and with that, we conclude today's lesson. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to talk a bit about DNS and how to set it up and how that works. Uh, so until then, this is Isaac, and have a great day. Bye-bye.